Do you have wrist pain? An aching back? Burning forearms? Then this video is for you. Art injuries are something that I've dealt with for years. It's frustrating because you may be motivated and excited to create some art, but you can't because your own body is holding you back. As a professional artist, this can be a matter of life and death. You know, you gotta make money. But even as a hobbyist, it can be immensely frustrating to want to express yourself, but be unable to. Over the course of trying to heal my own injuries, I have tried everything. Every gizmo, therapist, you name it. Some of those things worked for me, and many of them didn't. So in the course of this video, I want to share the things that did work. I've got some habits and rehab techniques that I want to share with you that can help you to make more art with less pain. So just as a disclaimer before we start, this is not medical advice. This is simply me sharing my opinions and my personal experience. I think it's helpful to start by looking at the habits of your life and how that might be contributing to the pain you're experiencing. You can think of it this way, as something that I've been doing has gotten me into this mess. Oftentimes, the thing that's gotten us into trouble with body pain has to do with either a problem with our posture or with the process of art making, and that is making our pain worse in some way. And there's good news. If that's the case with your problem, then that means that there's a specific thing that you can change in order to make your body feel better. And before I get into the habits, I want to spend a moment talking about posture because this is a big contributor to the pain that we experience today in modern society. Just about everything that we do in our leisure and work time in some ways has to do with having a rounded back and a forward head posture. Think of how you're sitting when you're looking at your phone, when you're working on a laptop, when you're relaxing in front of the TV at the end of the day. All of these things encourage this posture that is very hunched forward. The reason this can start to wreak havoc on you over time is when you're hunched forward like this, you're using the wrong muscles to hold up the wrong stuff. Specifically, you're using really tiny muscles to hold heavy things. Like when you're leaning forward like this, your tiny neck muscles are being used to hold up your big old head. And I mean no offense by that, I think you have a lovely head. This is like holding a bowling ball with your arm outstretched. Your body just wasn't designed to do it that way. There's a whole chain of problems that can come with this forward head posture. Your back and your shoulders end up being too overstretched. Your chest and your bicep can be too tight and shortened. You can end up with muscle knots and the really tiny muscles like in your forearms. And your body kind of remembers this shape if you do it enough. So over time, by default, you're always just like this. So that was just a quick aside on posture because it's so integral to what I'm going to be talking about in this video. And now, like I said, I'm going to be getting into some habits and some rehab techniques that can fix almost all art injuries that we face. And I'll be starting off with some habits. Habit number one is to create an ergonomic art setup that keeps you upright while you're working. And I'm going to target a couple specific areas of the art process that you can look at and tweak a little bit just to keep yourself upright. The first one is palette mixing, which takes up a large portion of a painter's time. The default is to have your palette, you know, set horizontally, and you kind of hunch over and mix it, especially if you're standing up. And so one thing I've experimented with is setting my palette vertically next to my painting. I've been painting this way for about a year at this point, and it does a good job of encouraging me to not hunch over or not need to hunch over while I'm mixing. Um, one thing to be aware of is with some tube paints, if you squeeze the tube paint on a palette that's mostly vertical, it might tend to kind of slide and wiggle down. 
So one thing I do to mitigate that is as soon as I squeeze the tube paint on, I'll take my palette knife and just kind of mush the paint around a little bit. And usually that kind of keeps it in place. The second area we can look at is if you are drawing, then you could use a drawing board or a slanted draftsman table while you draw. Another pointer for painting is while you're painting, try to paint as close to your eye level as you can, or maybe a little bit below that. So adjust your easel height while you're working to accommodate so that your eye is pretty much at the spot that you're working with at the time. And if you're at maximum height on your easel and you can't go any higher, then find something to prop up your canvas a little bit. I use a cardboard box usually for most of my paintings. I just stick it under there and then I tape it down just to make sure it doesn't fly out and, you know, I lose my painting. The next thing we can tweak ergonomically is your computer setup. I know that's not exactly related to art for all of us, but we spend a lot of time at our computers, so a bad posture with your computer over all those hours is going to lead to pain in your art making. So this is a really good thing to target. The gist of a good computer setup is you want your eyes to be around the top of the computer display. You want your arms to be at a 90 degree angle and you want your feet to be flat on the ground. And the final bit of ergonomic device has to do with your phone. And my general advice here is try to minimize your phone use as much as you possibly can. There isn't really a good ergonomic way to look at your phone. And unfortunately, most of us spend a whole lot of time on our phones. If you're an addict like me and you're having a lot of difficulty getting away from that phone time, you can get an app called Freedom. That's what I use. And that locks you out of your phone for set periods of time. Habit number two is to do intermittent posture checks. And generally what this is, is you just every once in a while wanna make sure that your hips, your shoulders, and your head are in vertical alignment with each other. You can use an alarm on your phone for this. Say every 10 minutes, just check and see like, okay, where are my hips, my shoulders, and my head right now? Is my head leaning forward? Well, then I can just move my head back, get into a normal posture, and get back to work. Habit number three is to hold your tools lightly. This might be something that takes a little bit of mindfulness and time for you to change. I know for myself, I habitually grip my pencils really, really tightly, and it's taken a while for me to get used to lightening up on that grip, but it's made a big difference in pain for me. So let's look at our different tools here. With the palette knife, for example, you really don't wanna dig down with the palette knife and push down really hard. Hold it lightly. Same with your pencils and your brushes. You just want a light grip with it. It shouldn't feel like the muscles around your elbows are really strained and tense. If you're having difficulty holding something lightly, one thing you can do is add a grip to your pencil, for example. And for some reason, that bigger grip just makes it easier for you to hold it and not clench quite as much. Habit number four is to take frequent breaks. Set a 20 minute timer on your phone and every 20 minutes, step away from your work for a while. We don't think to do this because we're in the zone, but taking these brief breaks are actually good for your body and for your art. It gives you a chance to reset your mind, to look at your painting from a different perspective, and it gives your body a break from the posture that it was in. Habit number five is do frequent movement and stretches. This works perfectly with your break time. When you're at your 20 minute break, just move around. Your body loves constantly shifting around. It makes your joints and your muscles all happy. So during your break time, take neighborhood walks, find a stretch routine you can do. And if you're bold, just wiggle your body all over the place like a new age dancer. Habit number six is to experiment with your sleep position. Your sleep posture can reinforce weird positions, it can cut off your blood flow, all kinds of stuff. And if you think about it, we spend a third of our time in this posture of sleeping. So if it's a bad posture, it can definitely lend itself to feeling pain when we're awake. 
One thing that I've been experimenting lately is instead of sleeping with a pillow under my head, I sleep with a rolled up towel right under my neck, and then I set a pillow underneath my knees and I lay on my back to sleep. So those were habits we can cultivate over time in order to create a healthier body. And now I'm going to be getting into rehab techniques. This is what we're going to do to target the actual pain that we're feeling right now. And rehab technique number one is if you need to, to take time off. This is especially pertinent if you have sharp pain that you're dealing with. You may need to take some time off in order to allow your body to get to a baseline where you can actually start to work with making yourself feel better. This can be immensely frustrating to think about stopping, but I think it's important to take a long-term view of your art journey. Stopping sometimes is moving forward. So you're not falling behind if you have to take a break because of pain. You're moving as fast as possible towards building an art practice that is efficient and works with your body. And occasionally that means not doing a drawing today. Rehab number two is to use a brace for support. This can be really useful when you need to get work done, but your muscles are feeling a little wonky. I occasionally use an arm brace as well as a back brace while I'm working. Rehab number three is massage. My little working theory about pain is that the muscles are chronically tight and they end up getting stuck and kind of tangled up in a knot. This muscle knot means that blood can't flow through there and clear gunk up, and because you've got a knot there, the muscles can't really ever relax. So what can you do? You get rid of the knot, and that's where massage comes in. I like to use a massage wand, and my general strategy is just to move around the knot and try to relax my muscles as much as I possibly can. It's good to get some perpendicular motion along the length of the muscle as well while you're massaging. And if you don't want the expense of a massage wand or you want an additional tool to dig in more, um, a massage ball or a lacrosse ball works really well. I really like to dig in with this ball to get that kind of feel good pain while I'm working. And another thing you can do with this massage ball is you kind of find the location of the knot once you're sort of pegged in to that spot, then you can contract and expand your tendon and just allow that to work a little bit while you're pegged down. Rehab number four is movement. Your joints and your muscles love to move. In fact, your body is kind of a self-oiling, self-cleaning machine. Think of like a pond, for instance. Water in a pond accumulates gunk. You know, stuff just sits there, it doesn't move around, so stuff gets all green and gunky. Contrast that to a river of water. It's moving, it's constantly refreshing, and so the water in a river is clean versus a stagnant pond is gunky and dirty. Think of your body in that same way. Movement is the way that your body cleans and gets the gunk out. So you don't need to overthink this stuff. It's just kind of the the stuff you're familiar with and you've known to do all your life. Do neck and shoulder rolls, do squats and stretches. If you're feeling arm pain, then do like wrist flexion techniques and just wiggle stuff around. It's your body's way of cleaning itself out, getting blood and lymphatic fluid through everything and getting everything healthy. Rehab number five is strengthening. Strong muscles help support your joints. So if your muscles are weak and don't have enough endurance, then they can tire out too quickly. And then other muscles have to step in to do the job and you get injuries. The thing you wanna target with strengthening is what's known as eccentric exercises, which is where you lengthen your muscles under tension. And finally, rehab number six is relaxation. Here's another little pet theory of mine. We've all got muscles that are meant for movement and muscles that are meant for stability. But most of us spend all of our time walking around chronically tight because we're using our movement muscles to stabilize ourselves instead of using our stabilizing muscles. 
the biggest change in my health that I've ever experienced so far has been as I've started practicing relaxing those movement muscles and using my stabilizing muscles instead day to day. Nobody's ever heard of this rehab technique I'm about to tell you before, but it's had the biggest effect on my arm health out of anything that I've ever done. It's called Chinese standing meditation. You can look it up. Some people call it hugging the tree or holding the balloon. For those that are interested, I'll put a link to a YouTube video series down in the description. These videos are straight out of the 90s. They're retro and just absolutely wonderful. You'll see. But in short, what you're learning to do is just let go of muscle tension that you've just habitually had all of your life. And as you let go of this tension, start using those stabilizing muscles, um, blood starts just flowing through there. It's like I was talking about earlier with your body just kind of self-cleaning. You're cleaning out the pipes by just relaxing these movement muscles and allowing your stabilizing muscles to hold you up. So there you go. Those are my habits and my rehab tips for healing your art injuries and transforming your body into an efficient art-making machine. And I just want to close now with three encouragements for you before we go. Number one is to have hope. Your body is amazing at healing itself. Number two is be patient. The quickest way to getting better is by not overdoing things. So listen to your body as you're doing this and be patient. And number three is be grateful for your body. Your body has done some absolutely amazing things for you. As you bring in a concern for your body's health into your vision of the stuff that you want to do, your body is going to transform with that and become this efficient and capable tool that helps you to achieve your goals even better than you ever have in your life. So work with your body. That is going to only contribute to your goals in the long run. Thank you for watching this video and have a great week.